Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So this is part four of our talk on how Islam applies to modern economics. As we have seen, current textbooks convey the impression that Islam has nothing to do with economics. And this is more or less true because the foundations of modern economics are based on concepts which are antithetical to Islam. Modern Islamics is built on competition, greed, individuality, hedonism, whereas Islam allows us to create revolution which is uh, and create a society or economics based on cooperation, generosity, uh, social responsibility. So if we apply Islam to economics, we'll find that we have to replace all of modern economics by a new style of theory. So the Islamic approach to economics is revolutionary. Uh, the basic concept of human beings in economics is based on homo economicus, which is a man without a heart and a soul. And he has robot -like behavior, which can be calculated by mathematical formula. But Islam works on changing the behavior of human beings. Islam tells us that human beings have the capability of being the lowest of the low, but also the highest of the high. So the idea is to improve human beings and make them behave cooperatively, generously. And, and now one might think that, oh, this is too idealistic. How can all people become so, so perfect? So the thing is that Islam doesn't ask us to achieve paradise on earth. It says that we have to try for it. So Islam is about the process, working to improve, not about the outcome that everybody becomes an angel. At all times, they will, we will be, have people at all stages of spiritual progress. So one thing that is important, especially economic student, after listening to this talk, say that, oh, this all of this economics we have learned is garbage. We should just give up. We should drop out. We shouldn't learn these things. This is the wrong idea because today the whole world is running on this economic theory. If you want to understand what's happening in the world, you have to understand this theory because people try to understand, people try to make policies on the basis of these theories. So we won't be able to understand what's going on in the world if we don't understand these theories. But for teachers of this course, it's important to understand that we don't want to teach students this theory as a, as a truth. We don't want them to teach them micro details, how to do the calculations. We want to teach them the concepts on which this economics is built. We want to send, uh, teach the students to see through the math and the technicalities. We want to teach them how to drive the car, not the details of the engine. And one of the things that we will need to do in this process is to use the fellow traveler model. We will be learning just as much as our students. It is not that I am an expert. I have already learned. And now my job is to turn the students into the expert to transmit knowledge. Actually, together we will learn how this economic theory is used in this world. For uh, helping uh, teachers and students, I have already constructed courses in which I have used this approach. So the first pass has already been done. Actually, the courses I have constructed are uh, first rounds. It is said in Islamic principles that a teacher should first master the material, then he should um, learn how to teach it, then he should learn how to simplify it. So I must say that I have uh, the course that I have developed is the first round, so I have not actually even made the effort to make it easy for the students. So this provides a basis and teachers and students should work on it and improve it. So the first course that I want to describe here is a course on advanced microeconomics. Uh, this course has links which I have given here in this slide. It starts out by this uh, covering this hill in my anti-textbook. The point of covering this is to create contact with conventional micro. The first 10 textbooks can cover the basic theories of all micro. But instead of teaching the details of what these theories are, this uh, textbook explains what these theories are so that we can understand the big picture and then explains why these theories are wrong. 
and how they are used in the real world. So now Islam helps us to create an alternative. Uh, we look at the concepts that are being conveyed by conventional economics like those in the anti-textbook. Uh, this is one of the great features of the anti-textbook that it teaches us the concepts, not the techniques. Uh, one of the central concepts is the that the model of human behavior that is used, homo economicus, this is contradicted by actual human behavior. So the theory is not true. So the question is why do we use this theory? So we find if we study it that the theory is used to justify the optimality of markets. It's used to justify theories that just leave people alone. Uh, the, and everybody will have the best outcome. So Islamic theory can be used to oppose this because it says that this is the wrong model of human beings and this is the wrong model of happiness. The anti-textbook shows that the assumptions of theories are wrong, the predictions they make are wrong, the policy implications they make are wrong, and the welfare implications are wrong. So then the question is, why do these theories continue to be taught? Uh, so the answer is that this is because of power knowledge. Theories which are taught, they are taught because they serve the interests of the powerful. They justify the existing system. They protect and preserve the status quo. So in the new basis for micro, we want to construct on the basis of Islamic economics. We want to differentiate between needs and wants. We want to fulfill the needs, but we do not want to create wasteful behavior. We don't want to have wasteful behavior. We don't have, want to have conspicuous consum consumption. Islam warns us against following hawa or idle desires. They're saying that these lead to Jahannam. Economists teach us to follow our idle desires. So this actually, once we say that, okay, needs are good, but wants are bad, we have an entirely new basis, a new foundation for economics. There's no scarcity. What we have is already enough to fulfill needs. The question is not trying to fulfill wants, but trying to prevent the fulfillment of wants so that the luxuries of the super rich are diverted to providing basic needs for the poor. This will create a revolution in economics. The current course that I have constructed is a bridge course. It is a temporary course. Currently, we teach what existing theory is, and then we teach alternatives to it that have already been developed, like behavioral economics has developed some uh, ideas about how human beings actually behave. Islamic economics gives us some very good concepts and they are already present in articles. Experimental economics allows us to run experiments to show the students that the games, uh, that the real behavior of human beings is not according to economic theory. Then there is agent-based modeling, which allows us to uh, model heterogeneous agents. Different agents are different. You see, if you have heterogeneous agents, different people behaving differently, then conventional micro theory cannot handle it because they cannot do the mathematical calculations. So in agent-based models, we allow different agents, different kinds of behaviors, and then we put them in the computer to solve the game. This is called complexity theory. And um, many phenomena which emerge, you can't predict from the individual. So the sum is bigger than the parts. And this is kind of thing which conventional economics cannot do. Similarly, instead of optimization behavior, which is what economists assume, we just uh, use heuristics, which is what experimental and behavioral teach us, that human beings don't optimize. They use heuristics to solve uh, their decision problems. And there is also evolution, evolutionary game theory. This is a substitute for the equilibrium theory of economics. We don't assume that there is equilibrium to begin with. This assumption is false. We say, okay, let people behave and then let this system evolve and see if it comes to equilibrium or if it does not. So there are all these techniques which are now available, which allow us to develop a genuine, serious, uh, 
complex and sophisticated alternative to conventional micro. Uh, the second portion of my advanced micro course is based on the Holt and Davis text, Experimental Economics. It basically takes conventional economic theories and simulates them in the lab and shows that these theories don't really work. Uh, and this, uh, because uh, experiments are run on the students, the students really get an understanding of theories much better than what happens when they are taught by formulas on pencil and paper. So this course provides students with an intuition about real world economics and it provides them with hands-on experience. It uh, creates a lot of motivation, creates a lot of insight, creates a lot of improved learning outcomes. I have existing material on more than 10 courses in which I have videotaped the lectures and provided all the references. These are based, these courses are based on a radical design based on Islamic pedagogical principles, which I have covered elsewhere on this blog. These lead to better educational outcomes. These are based on the principle that you should teach the students how to drive. Don't teach them about how to put the engine parts together. It's based on the Islamic idea that you should be learning beneficial knowledge, which is of use to mankind. And we should make the intention to serve mankind, not to make money for ourselves. So all of these courses are available. You do a little research on my uh, website, asadzaman.net and you will be able to find links for it for the advanced macro course which is based on incorporating history and getting students to understand real world ma macro as opposed to mathematical theories uh, there is a website called uh, bit.blusat.flash easy for macro so uh, this provides us with a uh, this is the conclusion of my talk that islam actually doesn't seem to overlap with conventional macro and conventional micro because these conventional micro and macro courses are built on wrong foundations which are antithetical to Islam. They are opposed to Islam. That's why Islam doesn't seem to have anything to do with them. But it doesn't mean Islam has nothing to do with economics. It means Islam doesn't have anything to do with the way West has formulated economics on the basis of selfishness and greed and competition. Islam provides us with a radically new different alternatives and it provides us with an opportunity to create a model which the whole world is waiting for and the whole world needs at this time to save the planet from catastrophe that is looming. So we end with Akhru Dahwana and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Subhanallah Rabbil Hamdihi Yalid Al-Khalqihi Barazan Al-Sayyid Barazan Al-Sayyid سبحان الله وحمده سبحان الله وسيم تبارك الله أسم الخالقين